Hey there kids, welcome to another math video for Eureka Math Grade 5. And we're doing Module 3, Lesson 11 homework today. Hopefully you already watched the problem set video. I have a great problem set video with a ton of notes that will really talk you through the methods that we can use uh, on this page, on this assignment, and forever in your math. It's also, they're kind of detailed on the homework helper uh, on pages 61 and 62 in case you forget them or need to refer back and you don't have your notes page then uh, you can kind of read through what the Eureka Math people uh, show you on those and that is also helpful. So um, the objective for this lesson is to subtract fractions making like units numerically which means no more models so we're just going to try to get common denominators that's what like units are common denominators so that we can subtract or add as the case may be if you wanted to use one of the methods. <clears throat> so we're gonna um, look at the numbers and then try to make them the same thinking about do I need to multiply these two or is there a lower common denominator than if I multiply them. Really gonna use that skill today. So let's get started. Two and five, well, we know we're gonna have to multiply and get 10. It's a subtraction problem. So set up your common denominators with 10. And because when you use the other number as your scale factor, you're going to go ahead and multiply right on the top so that 1 half is equal to 5 tenths. Keep, keep the location of your fractions the same. The first number, that minuend comes first or the, the whole has to be first. So do not switch the locations. The 2 is going to be here because 2 times 1 is 2 because when multiplying to get 10, we have to multiply five by two, that's the scale factor. That's why those end up in those places. <clears throat> when you see, hopefully, that the location of the five and the two, they have to be here because we're taking two away from the five, so you can't do the switching like you can in addition and multiplication. Anyway, five minus two is three, and hopefully you got that right. It's probably the easiest one, and uh, everything else is just like one step up. So here we have 8 and 3, so not quite the easiest multiplication like it was, but you can multiply and get 24 as your common denominator. Using the other number as your scale factor, now we don't have 1s anymore, we've got a 7 on top. So 3 times 7, 21. 8 times 1, 8. Doing your subtraction, 21 minus 8, hopefully you got 13. 24ths. Thinking about, can I simplify this? Nah, because 13 is a prime number, so you're going to have to have either 1 or 13, and it's not 26. If it was 26 down here, we could simplify it to 1 half, but it's not, so we'll move on. <clears throat> now here's one. So this was easy multiplication, pretty easy multiplication. Now if I was to multiply these, I would get 50, but I do not want to multiply and get a really big number when the other number is a multiple of one of my denominators. In this case, I want to use 10. You don't always have to change both fractions to have equivalent fractions. Sometimes you can just leave it alone and change one fraction to be equivalent. So my scale factor, this is where you're not using, we're not going to multiply 10 times 3 to get 30. That would not work here because we didn't multiply 5 times 7 to get 35. And we don't have 50 on the bottom. So the, the difference here between, you know, what we're doing when we multiply and this new numerator is you have to remember that there's a scale factor. We're going to multiply by a number to get the new denominator. And whatever that scale factor is, that's what you use to get your new numerator. And that makes it so easy. If you did use 50, you're going to have bigger numbers. And then when you subtract, you're going to have to simplify. So 1 tenth is the simplified answer. OK, now we have a mixed number. And again, I want you to look and see that 6 is a common denominator. I do not have to use 18. I can simply rewrite 1 and 5 sixths and subtract my equivalent fraction in sixths that used to be third. 
just like here. What is the scale factor? How do I get from three to six? It's times two. Two is my scale factor, two times two is four. When you create your second uh, fraction or the subtrahend, okay, if this is the minuend, then this is the subtrahend, you could write that on the top if you want because I don't really use those, but since I'm talking about them so much in this video, just write minuend minus subtrahend is the difference. These are all abbreviations. That's not the whole word, but now you know which part I'm talking about. Um, when you make your equivalent fraction, if you have made a numerator that is low enough to subtract from the first fraction's numerator, you don't have to do anything else on this one. This is simply 5 minus 4, so 5, 6, minus 4, 6, that's 1, 6, but don't forget the 1. Okay, so that's where... You want to make sure, yes, you're doing the subtraction, but you're also not forgetting about the whole number you started with. <clears throat> All right, on the next one, we have two mixed numbers, and we need to get a common denominator because um, one isn't the skip counting of the other, so we have to multiply these, and four and five, we've done enough of those. Hopefully, you know that 20... is your common denominator. So I'm gonna not change any of my whole numbers. I just wanna get my common denominator. This is one of the methods that you can use. And when you multiply uh, by your scale factor, because four times five is 20, then five times one is five. So my first fraction from the menu end is gonna have five twentieths. My second fraction is gonna have four twentieths. So in my equivalent fractions, the size of the second is low enough where I can do my subtraction. Now instead of going across, I'm going to go down on this one. Two minus one is one, and five minus four is one. And this is all possible because this mixed number is low enough to subtract from here. So in the beginning, they're not giving us really super challenging problems. In the notes on the problem set video, I actually talk about well, what happens if something is too high over here, then we're going to use a different method. Okay, now 7 and 3, we know that we have to get 21 as our common denominator, and we have two mixed numbers, so we have whole numbers to deal with. So rewrite not forgetting the whole numbers, but make your common denominators because mathematically we have to get those numerators now. Seven times three is 21. If this is my scale factor, multiply it and get the new numerator. Three times seven is 21. If this is my scale factor, multiply and get the new numerator. 14 is less than 18, so I can do my straight subtraction. Five minus three is two. 18 minus 14 is four. Bring the 21 down, that's just your label, and think about simplifying, but you can't do it here, so we move on. Okay, now this one has two mixed numbers, but I want you to notice, I could multiply and get 32, but why? Why would I want to do all that work? Simply use 8. 8 is a multiple of 4. If the other number is a multiple of your other denominator, okay, so 8 is a multiple of 4, I will use 8, and you do not have to change this number at all. Copy it. I'm going to use that one, and I already had a number that is a factor or a multiple of 4. This one needs to change. Not the whole number, just the fraction. It's just the fraction that has to scale up. How much is it going to scale up? By 2. 4 times 2 is 8, therefore 3 times 2 is 6. In looking at the subtrahend, 6 is less than 7. This is going to be an easy subtraction problem. 15 minus 5 is 10. 7 minus 6 is 1. Keep your label. 10 and 1 8th. Hopefully you got that. Hopefully your homework is done. Like I always say, get your homework done first and use this just to check. Now, 8 is not a multiple of 3. So we know we need to get a common denominator. You can think about Skip counting by 8. 16 is not a multiple of 3, but 24 is. So 24 is your common denominator. 
And now we need new numerators. <clears throat> Since this is my other scale factor, I can multiply three times five, get the new numerator, multiply eight times one, get the new numerator, 15 minus three, and then 15 minus eight for your new final numerator answer. Think about simplifying, but this cannot be simplified, so we circle it and leave it. All right, and we're on to our word problems. All right, Sandy ate one-sixth of a candy bar. John ate three-fourths of it. How much more of the candy bar did John eat than Sandy? It's just comparing, so we want to be able to do the subtraction and show the difference. If somebody is asking you how much more of this than this, look at that, how much more of this than that, then it's a subtraction problem. Okay, those are key words. <clears throat> you want to have your bigger fraction first. Sometimes when you first start looking at them, you might think, I don't know which one's bigger. Okay, but you'll figure it out once you get into it. I want you to think about, is it closer to zero? Is it closer to a half? Or is it closer to one whole? Three out of four pieces is bigger than one out of six pieces. That's not very much. So in the ordering of your fractions, you want to have the bigger one first so you can find the difference. Now for this, this is a great example of how to use the lowest common denominator. Remember that the strategy is skip counting. The scale factor would be up on top. What am I multiplying by? By one, we have four and six. If I multiply by two, I get eight and 12. And I go, oh, I know that 12 is a multiple of four when I use three. And I, when I have something in common, I want to stop. I want to use that number as my common denominator. Then what is the scale factor? The scale factor is on top. It's what you're multiplying by to get that number. So I'm multiplying four by three to get that. Therefore, I multiply three by three. I'm multiplying six by two. Therefore, I'm multiplying two times one. Nine minus two is seven. And that is how much more of the candy bar John ate than Sandy. Seven twelfths more of the candy bar. Be sure and label everything with words because you need to know what it is that you're solving for. Okay, for the next one. Four and a half yards of cloth are needed to make a woman's dress. Two and two sevenths yards of cloth are needed to make a girl's dress. How much more cloth is needed to make a woman's than a girl's? Notice when you're comparing, it's not T-H-E-N, it's T-H-A-N. That's that grammar nerd in me. Okay, so take your larger number, and this one is a little bit more clear. And we have our two mixed numbers, and we need a common denominator, but this one's going to be pretty easy because it's just the 2 times 7. So make your 14ths. This is your scale factor. The other number is, so 7 times 2 is 14, so 7 times 1 is 7. And then 2 times 7 is 14, so 2 times 2 is 4. This is easy subtraction. 4 minus 2 is 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. And this is yards um, more for a woman's dress. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Here we have Bill reading a book. Bill reads one-fifth of a book on Monday. He reads two-thirds of the book on Tuesday. He finishes reading the book on Wednesday with some amount that we don't know. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the total of our one-fifth and our two-thirds. If you want to make a tape diagram to see what's happening here, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We have one-fifth here. It doesn't really matter about the size. I know you guys are looking at it going, well, it's in three pieces. Yeah, it's just three days. Two-thirds, we're, we're just organizing our numbers and question mark. So um, if he finished it, then this represents the whole whole book 
And so I just need to know uh, what the total is of this so that I can take that away from the whole. But first I have to add those up. And I have to get a common denominator. 3 times 5 is 15. So we're going to get our uh, scale factor from the other denominator, 3 times 1, and 5 times 2. Add the numerators to get 13 fifteenths. And what did you just find? We found out how much was red already. So always go back to your question and say, all right, now what is it actually asking? What fraction of the book did he read on Wednesday? This is what we know is the total now. So to find Wednesday, what's the whole book? We've gone over this in class if you're in my class. The whole book would be 15 15 It's the denominator. Put that on top. That's the whole book minus 13 15 which is already read. Already done. And so that leaves a very small portion for Wednesday. So two fifteenths were read on Wednesday. Sorry, I crossed that out. I'm not crossing it out. I'm just trying to circle it in a bad way. Okay, last one. Do click subscribe. Come back again. Uh, I try to help you on math videos. Yay. Okay, tank A has a capacity of 9.5 gallons. Now, I'm going to read this a different way because kids will read it 9.5. 9 and 5 tenths. Don't forget place value positions. This is going to be really important. 6 and 1 third gallons of the tank's water are poured out. How many gallons of water are left? You can make a tape diagram if you wanted. I am going to turn this decimal fraction into a mixed number. So when you see it this way, when you read it correctly, you're actually able to create that fraction right there. So 9 and 5 tenths is your fraction. And 9 and 5 tenths is your decimal, but it sure helps you write it if you don't say 9.5. So now that you have your... Um, we turn the lights on. Now that you have your nine and five tenths minus six and a third, I wanna show you a step that can actually kind of save things for you. What if I simplify this to be nine and a half? Isn't that technically the same thing as nine and five tenths? Isn't it though? Isn't it? It is. So when I do that, hmm, getting that common denominator makes my work a whole lot easier because six, is a common denominator that's a lot lower than 30. And remember, I want things to be as easy as possible. So look, I just simplified it before I subtracted. Can I do that? Yes, you can. Now I need to get sixths from here and this other denominator is my scale factor. So I end up with three minus two. Do your subtraction with your whole numbers and your subtraction with your numerators. And you're left with what do we have? Gallons. Three and one six gallons are left in the tank. Yay. And then you're done. So kind of cool. Some really cool things in here. I really do enjoy these new methods of subtraction, uh, but this one was really just kind of an easy lesson. They did not test your metal in this lesson for sure. Um, but anyway, I hope you had fun, and I hope this was helpful, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.